Firstly, by uh, recognising the traditional owners of this land and their elders past and present uh, and uh, elders here today, specifically Aunty Norma Shelley and Uncle Ivan, thank you for being with us. Could I just also take the opportunity to thank uh, Geraldine and Ian for being with us from the Ministry today. Your participation is really important in terms of our launch, so thank you for putting the time aside. Uh, to uh, John uh, Gordon, uh, the board representation to me is really important. This is not only about executive leadership of this program, but also uh, from the board itself. So John, I sincerely thank you for putting your time aside today. Uh, to the district uh, executive staff, general managers and service directors, uh, uh, and many guests. But I would also specifically like to recognise the uh, Aboriginal staff who are part of our health service, a very important part of our health service, and for you also for coming today uh, to hear about this important launch. I'd like to uh, tell everyone that this is an important event for South Western Sydney uh, Local Health District. It will commence what I perceive to be as probably one of the most important journeys for us as an organisation. The journey will be, I see, as a, deep, uh, a journey towards a deep understanding and true respect for Aboriginal people and their culture and for us maturing ag as an organisation where these values are embedded in the fabric of our systems, our processes, our behaviours and our services. But before I commence to talk to you a little bit about it, I actually want to tell you a story. In the early 80s, I was a student at the University of New South Wales, and it was at a time when the Mabo case was still a long way off and recognition of native title was still a dream when Aboriginal Protection Boards had only been disbanded in 1969. 1969, and racism across Australia was still very strong. I was asked to join a project that would involve interviewing a range of people on their views, opinions, and understanding of Aboriginal land rights. And I think at the time when I was invited, I really didn't quite <coughs> grasp the whole, the whole strength of the project, but I said, yes, I'd do it. The task would be involved in no negotiating the interviews of the people, preparing the material, videoing the interviews and editing the material. So it was quite an extensive project, it just wasn't doing the interviews alone. We agreed as a group that we would interview a representative from a mining company, a pastoralist, an Aboriginal elder and at the time Pat O'Shane who I think, I don't know whether she was still a lawyer at that time in the 80s, but as, all, as many of you know, uh, very prominent in terms of Aboriginal uh, land rights. We interviewed, uh, we did the interviews, and I think Pat was uh, probably towards the end, but in interviewing the mining representative, the interview was progressing. We had a set format that we, that we went through. And when asked about his understanding of land rights, he explained, and this was his answer, it's a bit like St Mary's Cathedral, he said. The Catholic Church can use the land on top and the mining, and the mining company can, can continue to mine underneath. I thought very carefully about those words that he said. So that this explanation he gave me at the time told me many things, but most importantly, it demonstrated a true lack of understanding of not just about Aboriginal land rights, but of a rich and traditional culture that linked land and people and a way of life. I knew from this that the journey for non-Aboriginal Australian community had been and would continue to be a long and difficult process. The Respecting the Difference gives us the opportunity to develop, to develop an, in, an, uh, an insight into Aboriginal culture, history and how the actions over many years have impacted and continues to impact on the lives of Aboriginal people. And I just want to take a little bit of time to share with you some of the work that you will cover through the e-learning project and also in the, in, in, and in, and in the local content. So bear with me while I go it, but it's a very good insight into it. And so I'm going to lift a little bit out of the e-learning package. In Aboriginal culture, the land was created by the journeys of the spirit ancestors during a period known as dreaming or dream time. In song, story, poetry, drama and dance, the dream time tells how the spirit ancestors 
each symbolised by an animal which is the totem of the clan, gave life to the land and laid down the law. The structure of society, rituals to maintain the life of the land and rules of human behaviour. The dream time explains the origin of the universe, the workings of nature and humanity and the cycle of life and death. It shapes and structures Aboriginal life and relations between the sexes and, pres and prescribes a network of obligations to people, land and spirit. It is important to understand that according to the dreaming, Aboriginal people did not own the land in the European sense, but rather belonged to the land. And that's a very different concept to what people understand. The rule of the law as passed on by the dreaming was absolute throughout all aspects of Aboriginal life and was guarded by the elders. Select male and female people who possess great knowledge of the law. These elders made important decisions, gave inspiration and advice, arranged marriages, organised learning, initiations and ceremonies, arbitrated and settled disputes and fixed punishments if laws were broken. The Europeans did not understand Aboriginal culture and the close connection between Aboriginal people the land, and, and the land was not recognised under British law at the time. Because Aboriginal land was deemed unoccupied, it was declared terra nullis, land belonging to no one and was taken away without negotiations or treaties. The remnants of Aboriginal clans were forced to relocate sometimes hundreds of kilometres away from traditional lands onto reserves or missions where they were forbidden to speak traditional languages or practice cultural traditions. Life on the missions was harsh and there was little respect for human, uh, for human rights. Uh, to Auntie uh, Norma Shelley and to Uncle Ivan and to, my, uh, to our Aboriginal staff, um, uh, I'm sure some of the things that I just spoke about may, be, may, be, have, may have been difficult to hear, but I think it was important to share a little bit of the learnings that people will, uh, people will undertake over the, next, uh, over the next months as we work through the program. So this brief section that I've covered starts to let non-Aboriginal people understand the fabric of Aboriginal culture and how it shapes and informs their lives. Further, it provides some insight into the complex issues associated with poor health outcomes for our Aboriginal people. However, the Respecting the Difference program is not simply an educational package on the history and the culture of Aboriginal people to complete and tick off and say, yep, we've done that. And you'll notice in all the language that we've used uh, for, for, uh, for the program and the package, We've not talk, talk, we're not used the word mandatory. Why? This is not mandatory. This is part of how we need to operate as an organisation. So this training, uh, this training package is much more fundamental to this organisation. It is not simply about education. It is about a cultural change process. And what do I mean by this? It's about reassessing our values, our opinions and behaviours with our Aboriginal staff patients, families and carers. It is about challenging preconceived beliefs and perceptions. It is about striving to develop a culture of understanding and respect. It is about developing a deep appreciation of the importance for Aboriginal people of kinship, family, spiritual, spiritual beliefs and language. And it's about weaving these principles into our services our systems, policies and communication processes and changing who we are as a health service. Because this is our opportunity to actually make a difference. This health service, over the years probably, for me as a CE, we will be, very, we will be, ma we will be judged on many different criteria. But for me as the CE, this is the true test of this local health district. And our test is to show that we can turn our organisation into a place known for its respect and value of Aboriginal people, as an employer of choice for Aboriginal people who want to come and work with us, and, and that, we, uh, that our facilities are places where Aboriginal people feel safe to come and respect quality health care. There are three components to the delivery of Respecting the Difference. There is the e-learning package which we will launch today, 
there is a generic content and there is a local content that we will work over the next couple of months to build up uh, with our Aboriginal staff. In this district though, we intend to lead by example. I've planned that the district executive and the hospital service executive and senior managers will be the first to undertake the training before it is then spread out across the rest of the organisation. And further today, Uncle Ivan and I will, soon that will sign the commitment statement which will bind the health service to an ongoing process of cultural change and development. And the aim of that uh, commitment statement, together with a, uh, a piece of artwork, will be hung in each of, the, um, each of the entrances to the health services so when people come in they know the commitment that, we've, uh, that, we, that we intend to make. So today uh, is, very, is a very important day for us. It's the start to me, as I said to you, of a journey where we start to work through uh, a long process, but the aim being is that we work to be an organisation that truly respects and understands our Aboriginal people. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to now invite uh, Uncle Ivan and Amanda for two very important uh, tasks. And the first task is to please uh, unveil uh, the artwork uh, just over here. As Amanda said, this is artwork that will be displayed throughout our health services. I'd now like to uh, invite Uncle Ivan and Amanda uh, to please uh, sign uh, the joint statement of uh, commitment. Thank you. 